Hi, it's me again, and I'm glad it's not just me that notices these things with the BBC. I stumbled across this one, and I thought it, well, it bored my piss enough that we could have a bit of a bit of a chat about it today. It was in iNews, right? BBC gears up for licence fee battle after year of turmoil. It's not just a year of turmoil, though, is it? Turmoil should be in their blooming mission statement. When you think of some of the problems that have befallen that broadcaster over the years, the amount of scandals and horrible, hateful, terrible things that have happened there. Yeah, they need. To, they should have been gearing up for a licence fee battle a long time ago. I mean, when you just read this paragraph here, look. After a year of turmoil at the BBC with a series of scandals, the corporation is now gearing up for a fresh battle in 24 over the future of the licence fee. Shouldn't be any debate about that. It should be removed from them immediately. But anyway... For many within the BBC, a debate over the licence fee's core purpose will be a welcome distraction following 12 months of controversy. Okay. From allegations against former lead news anchor Hugh Edwards. Do we all remember that? All remember that one? That was fun, wasn't it? Pictures of his arse all over the internet. The departure of Richard Sharp as chairman. Richard Sharp appointed as chairman, having absolutely zero qualifications for the job. But he had some mates in high places that owed him a couple of favours, so he gets the gig as BBC chairman. An endless coverage of Gary Lineker's social media use. Gary Lineker, who is above the law, obviously, it doesn't matter what he says or does on his social media, he's above the law. You know, and it's not just, you can say what you want to say, I've got no problem with that. But the BBC did a full inquiry because of what Gary Lineker said that got him suspended for a match of the day for a bit. It came back with findings and some new rules about social media usage, naming Gary Lineker in that, in these rules. His name was there, and his show's name, Match of the Day, Match of the Day 2, were there in the, in the document. I'll show you the document. I'll, I'll show you the bloody document. It says here, look, those presenting flagship programmes on the BBC carry a particular responsibility to help to balance commitments to both freedom of expression and impartiality. Because of their profile on the BBC, this responsibility extends to their use of social media, both for personal and professional use, during the periods when these flagship programmes are on air and for a two-week window before and after the series. And as much of the day is on weekly, there is no window for Gary, really, is there, apart from the off-season. So we click here, right? This is the list of BBC flagship programmes. He is named here. Look, programme, match of the day, Mark Chapman and Gary Lineker. So he has to stick by the rules, but he's not. And yet nothing more, nothing more is coming from it. But it's not just that. The Gary Lineker social media use isn't where it stops. There's that paragraph there, which I'm not going to read, obviously. Let's not forget about the Tim Westwood scandals. Tim Westwood was famously a BBC Radio 1 DJ for a very long time. There's loads of allegations. Allegations, obviously. We're not saying he's done anything. We're not saying he hasn't done anything. There's loads of allegations. And then, who was the other one this year? Oh, Russell Brand as well. He's had a lot of allegations thrown about, hasn't he? And all right, doesn't currently work at the BBC, but he was at the BBC a long time and did an abhorrent thing. That telephone call was live on the BBC. So it's not just, it's not just a year of turmoil. The BBC is turmoil all over. So how are they going to fight this battle for the licence fee going forward in 24? Where is the argument for it? There's more and more cancellations happening every month. People don't understand why they're having to pay this organisation directly in order to watch other channels. The tide is turning on them. So yes, they've got a big battle coming up, but their their only way of winning the battle is the way they've won it this long. And that's the government. The government need to shift their focus on the BBC. They're saying, oh, we're going to do all these things. We're looking at alternative funding methods to allow the BBC to thrive and survive going forward. I don't care if the BBC thrive or even survive going forward. There should be a private company responsible for making their own money. And if they're not good enough to make their own money, then they go south. Same as every other private company in the country, why are they so protected? They're, they're talking about um, 
It says here that a panel of experts who are expected to report back in 24 will consider options to replace the mandatory fee, including a Netflix-style monthly subscription, which would mean putting BBC content behind a paywall and allowing the broadcaster to compete for advertising. But insiders are already warning against the shift to subscription with advertising because it will... Look, subscription wouldn't generate enough income to support the BBC's current services. The incentive would only make programming that retains subscribers. The technical obstacles are huge. The incentive would be to only make programming that retains subscribers. Isn't that the point? Isn't that the point? If Netflix didn't make programs people wanted to watch, nobody would subscribe to Netflix. That's the point, right? The BBC at this point in time are not incentivized to make anything people want to watch. That's why you never see any of the big dramas really that people talk about or any of the big shows that people really talk about coming out of the BBC. There is no incentive for them to do better because they know no matter what, they're currently at the minute going to get 3.7 billion quid a year. No matter what they do, no matter how much crap they make. But if Netflix started churning out endless crap and they're, they're not innocent in this obviously they do turn out some crap but if everything that was on there was crap no one would sus- subscribe to them and they would go south and then later on in this article they're talking about how if it went commercial there wouldn't be enough money to go around and it would take money away from other public service broadcasters in the country which is it's an argument i don't buy personally i refuse to buy that argument that there isn't enough advertising to go around. If you're watching ITV and you see an ad, you will see that ad on other channels. You know, the spend gets spread around multiple channels. There is enough money going. If there wasn't enough money in advertising going around, explain this one to me. So the latest news that's come out of this sort of thing is Amazon is now showing adverts. It says here on Money Saving Expert, from the 5th of February 24, you will be shown adverts when watching films and TV shows on Prime Video unless you pay a new monthly fee. If you want to watch Prime content without the ads, you've got to pay an extra $2.99 a month. Now, if ads weren't making any money, if the advertising market was completely flooded, why would Amazon now be entering it? Also, I happen to have, the only subscription I have at the minute is Discovery Plus. I like my car shows. It's full of them, right? And 90 Day Fiance, but we'll gloss over that because that's quite embarrassing. (laughs) On Discovery Plus, all plans have ads. So the basic is $3.99 a month, which is the one I have. Which plans have ads? All Discovery Plus plans have a limited number of ads in the on-demand content. What about Netflix? Netflix, the standard Netflix account now is ad supported. So you, the basic has pretty much been what is hard to find on there from what I'm told. I, I don't have it anymore. But the basic plan, the cheap one, now has ads on Netflix. So the ad market's completely flooded, is it? Yet more and more services are switching to commercialization. Now, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with paying a subscription for a service and then also having to sit through ads that's having your cake and eating it that's taking a mickey that's like what rte does in ireland and they charge you the license fee which is a big debate that i won't get into here with rte but they also show ads how the hell do they get away with that it, it it's beyond me the way the bbc should be thinking of moving forward this whole they're spending millions of pounds debating it they've got teams of people looking at it it's a piece of piss. It's easy. You chuck everything on iPlayer and charge whatever you want, four ninety nine a month. I don't care what you charge for it. I'm not going to pay it. You can charge what you want, BBC. And if people want to watch the latest BBC shows like they want to watch their EastEnders or whatever, they've got to pay for it. All tellies have iPlayer built in now, so there won't be a tuning issue. People can get it on phones and everything. There won't be any problems with that. But if you don't want to pay, you can have the ad version. Right? And they'll keep the broadcast channels, keep BBC News 24 or whatever it's called now, and keep BBC One broadcasting on the telly and just show repeats, which isn't far off what it's probably well doing anyway. So you can still watch EastEnders, but you've got to watch the Omnibus on a Sunday and there's ads every 15 minutes. The BBC News Channel will be full of ads, because it is anyway. They have designed the new BBC News Channel to have ad breaks. You don't see them in this country. You just get the weather or some update. I haven't watched it to check. I need to do that, actually. But if you're outside the UK, 
you get ads on BBC's 24-hour rolling news service. Why can't you just show the ads in the UK? Turn BBC One into a commercial channel that just shows repeats. If you want to watch the latest stuff, pay iPlayer. Done. I have just saved you hundreds of hours of debate, hundreds of hours of working it out, and millions of pounds in effort and work and poncing about that the government and the BBC are going to spend trying to work this out. I've done it for you. It's that It's that easy. Just show ads. All right, it doesn't help everything, as this article says. BBC radio stations first to close if licence fee replaced with subscription. That's fair dues. I'm not sure many people would pay a subscription for local radio. They want to do that. The BBC do want to do that. They're trying to put all local radio on the Sounds app, and they want to stop broadcasting. They just want it done on the Sounds app. Would you pay a subscription for that? Probably not. Would advertising support that? When you think you've got the buildings all around the country... The, the broadcast infrastructure, the back office staff, the presenters, all the equipment, probably not ad supported. That's why there's not so many local commercial stations now. There used to be like Essex FM and all of that. Obviously, I'm speaking from my local perspective. And they all got bought up by heart, didn't they? Because economy of scale, they couldn't survive on their own. So, yeah, it probably will cost local radio if they went paywall or subscription. But is that reason enough to keep the license fee? To some people it is, but the BBC are making a lot of changes to local radio as well. And there's a lot of complaints about local radio at the minute and the way it's going. It's getting it's going to get less and less local as they make more and more changes and more and more cuts. So yeah, Back to where we started. It gears up for a license fee battle in 24 after a year of turmoil. It's just another year to the BBC. It's not a, a year of specific turmoil. It's just another year to this company. God knows what turmoil is going to befall them in 2024. I don't wish for anything bad to happen. But the BBC is just ingrained in them isn't it? it? It's just part of the core culture of the BBC is to have scandals and cover up for things. And for the BBC's sake, I hope nothing big comes out for them in 24. I also hope there's big debate about the licence fee in 24. And we find out that in 2027, it's not going to be getting renewed and it's not going to turn into some sort of media tax or some crap that we can't not pay. But we'll see, I guess. And uh, whatever news does come out about it, you'll know about it here first. So make sure you've hit all the buttons and, and everything down below to subscribe, hey? What do you think about all this? If you want to read the uh, the articles I'm talking about here, I always put the links in the description below to all the things I talk about if you want to go and read them for yourself. There was a few things here. Go and have a look about it. Let me know your thoughts on it. While you're down there hitting the links and leaving your comments and everything, do hit the subscribe button and the like button, all of that, all the buttons down there as well. Because if you do that, hopefully I'll get to see you in another video again soon, won't I? Ta-da!